closer to home. Yeah. Um, the Captain Cook and boys, it's been a while since we've had an o older horses group one. Um, we had one yesterday and some amazing stats about our group one winners so far this season coming up. But as we look at this, I tell you what, about the stage here, as good as this field is, and they really burned up early, you did not want to be on any other horse but the grey stomping down the outside. Here is the Captain Cook. Dance, dance, dance. She released on the outside for Bosson. Hit the front now. Lake Colonel came down the outside. Dance, dance, dancers blowing them away. She's got it by four. Patty, another great run second. Authentic Patty. Top-end New Zealand gallopers racing for a top-end stake of $200,000. And uh, it was actually, Bruce, in uh, Opie Bosson's words, post-match, which we'll hear shortly, a bit of a rough house affair really on It this. was, yeah. I was going to make the same comment. Uh, quite a rough race. A lot number of horses getting shaved and buffeted. And so it was a quite roughly run affair. He ends up one off the fence initially, but quite happy to take the three wide cover soon after following a horse like Jon Snow. Uh, even there, he's getting pushed out a bit wider. Coming around the bend, our Aberdeen's probably the one to watch. As good as Dan's 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 is, our Aberdeen it would have finished within two lengths. Uh, Shafiq, I think, makes an error, staying near the inside. He had to then come right across heels. We'll watch them as they turn for home. It's in the black colours, back about fourth last on the inside. Uh, had a couple of goes at taking that inside run, got stopped, lost momentum. In the meantime, Dan's 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 has got to the outside, full of momentum. It's off and gone. Our Aberdeen is still not that well into the clear now, bumping with the horse to its outside there, Dark Princess, and then gets home really well for second. But Dan stands, Dan's really good win, good sectional, speed figure outstanding, proper Group 1 performance. Our Aberdeen very good in second. What about old authentic Paddy? The nine-year-old running, actually running second, just his fourth go at the race, too. Yeah, it? and he ran another great race. He's just, he's just a marvel, isn't he? Authentic. Patty Look, I thought this was shades of Sebby Cope's dominance at uh, Hastings. Just as uh, good. it was a big don't argue, wasn't it, Liz? Mm. It's, it's impossible to argue with that. Strange race in the fact that a lot of people, which I liked, I like tempo in races, wanted to be in the same place. Mm. Natural roll forward horses like John Snow, who missed the kick a little bit. And Matty had to push into that gap, and then Ocean Emperor likes to go forward, and so does Authentic Patty. So they've all got the right to be there, but there was a bit of pushing and shoving, as Bruce said. Mm. And Opie must have just been laughing. Like, here's a horse he's never been on before, and he lobs onto it. But as good as his ride was, um, the training performance um, from, from the Gibbs mm. stable, absolutely mm. outstanding. Just Gibbs a Bradley start. stable, my apologies. And look, it's an awfully long way from where they train down to Trentham, and here was the man of the Captain Cook Stakes. What about this performance of this filly, though, this mare? Yeah, she's, she was outstanding. I mean, you're always wondering if you've got them right. And on Michelle and I, we, you know, you set a little plan in place and the, and the stable, and, and it's just wonderful. She was above us out today, scared me a little bit, but I hope you rode her beautiful. There was a ton of pace that just set it up beautifully for her. Yeah, exactly. There was a lot of speed that we hadn't expected. Uh, where to from here for her? Uh, Zabil was always the, the idea, and then... Um, Probably have to start planning something for Sydney as a fresh campaign, I would think, the way she goes fresh. We'd probably have to look at that, but that's something that Kylie and we'll all talk about. That Everyone gets together and has a bit of a yarn, and we'll work it out. Congratulations, Kylie. How about that? I'm still shaking. <laughs> what a performance. It's the quality of the run, though, wasn't it? Oh, she... I could see it on the turn, and I think I was the first one up there in the grandstand with my arms out going, go Gracie, that's her name, and I could just see it. I mean, Opie got her into a wonderful position, and I, when she was in the clear, I just knew that she had it. You put it together, a uh, really, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complex and diverse ownership group. How much are they enjoying this? Oh, I cannot explain the excitement. I cannot explain. We shouted down the roof out there in the grandstand. It's lucky to be still standing, actually. Yeah. No, it's wonderful to get such a great group of owners and people involved who have never been in horses, and some have, and it's like sharing the experience is incredible. And from rags to riches, tell us again, how much did you pay for this horse? 5000 5000 <laughs> Must be very satisfying when you can come out and do what she's done today. Absolutely unbelievable, Aidan. Congratulations. Enjoy this one, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, OP, uh, this has been some performance from a very smart mare. Yeah, she is a very smart mare and um, some training effort too, so I was even a little bit sceptical coming into it, but fresh up over a mile and a bit of cut in the ground. Could you believe how much pace there was early in that race? Yeah, it was a bit, a bit pushy too, and um, I got in the three-wide train and wasn't getting pushed around, which was a good thing, and then 
opportunity for Harm. I was just hoping I wasn't going to get there too soon, but she's a very classy mare. It seemed almost that you were mindful of getting there quite early, and then she's been able to put it in the bed. But I know you're saying you, you, you didn't want to get there too soon, but you did get there rather quickly, too. Yeah, I didn't realise the turn of foot that she actually has. So I got there and I sat for a bit longer, so... But I know I had all the horses on the inside beat, and I'm just hoping nothing was coming down out yeah. wide. Step up to 2,000 metres on Boxing Day, sticking to weight for A should suit her down to the ground too. The ideal, she's just going to improve stacks with that. Dan's, Dan's dancing with a star there for sure. She was really dominant. Um, of the other runners, the obvious one, I suppose, uh, fellas, John Snow, he was about as flat as a snowman in the middle of summer, wasn't he, yesterday? Just always... Always seemed to be getting knocked around, well not so much knocked around, but just never looked a happy horse. He's a big horse though. He, he didn't miss the kick and, and Matt, because he needs to raise hand, he needed to push into that gap and he would just ended up having to go forward a lot and then he, once Dan's dance dance came around, he had to pull out of the 1-1 one, one and got three wide again. It's just a race which, total willing to forgive on him. Mm. The question is, is, once the tracks get drier, because they don't want to be racing on dry tracks, do they keep going to a Zabil or do they put him aside and come back in the autumn? What sort of horse do you think he is? He's sort of a wee bit, he's not quite there at 1,600 metres, he's not quite there at a mile and a half, is he? Now is he finding he's, he's raced in an awful lot of good races. Yeah. And, and he's got his chance. I'm just, just going, the winner for a start, it's an amazing stat for group ones in this country, and it's quite scary if you're heading to Caraca, or it's quite good if you're heading to Caraca, depending on what sort of person you are. The group one winners in this country this year for the older horses, Melody Bell won the first two. Fifty-seven and a half thousand dollars she cost. Yeah, Savvy Cope won the Livermore. I think she was fifty. Sixty-five. Wasn't it? Sixty years old, but and, and not a lot of money. Mm. That thing cost five thousand dollars. Even Madison County, who won the two thousand guineas, was about thirty-eight thousand dollars. Now the yeah. only obvious difference in this is Media Sensation, who cost a stack of money, but she's beautifully bred and she's a big lump of a thing, and she's worth well more than they paid for her now. But of the Group One winners in this country so far this year, none of them outside her have cost a lot of money. Yeah. So, so Bruce, Bruce, if somebody goes yeah. to Caraca, does it make you go... How do you find um, those, though? Well, that's what keeps yeah. you all interested, doesn't <laughs> But how do you find those? They sort of... They, they if it was that easy, them. it wouldn't be $5,000. Well, Seven Cove's <laughs> probably, you know, rated number 27 on the list of yearlings at the at the sales in terms of pedigree and type, and she comes out to be the fastest one, probably. Yeah, well, what, what about the fact that at $5,000, Kylie Bax, who's done a wonderful job promoting this horse, has syndicated... How do you syndicate a horse for $5,000? <laughs> do you mm. ring somebody and say, have you got 100 bucks? <laughs> Would you like to share a horse? So it's a great story and she'll head to the Zabil and a wonderful training performance from the Gibbs Bradley team and it's a really feel good story and, and she'll she'll get a little bit of a cult following now because mm. you could make the case she's the best horse in the country mm. and she'll because, get a cult following too now. Yeah, so literally yeah, yeah, so yeah it was good fun um, yeah. totally different type of race was the two year old which earlier in the day and Bruce this is unbelievable a maiden $100,000 group Two two year old race because that's what it turned out to be. There wasn't a winner. No, in the two race. maidens, five first starters. It was uh, a prop, uh, to be fair, a disappointing turnout. For and a they actually two. had to take late nominations to get it off the ground, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. So and I tell you who's happy they did. Tiaka Aotea Lad came out. Opie Bosson had a huge old day at the office. Head trial goal. No one surprised by this, but. I tell you what, Opie is 100% dialed in at the moment. You know the colours, you know them pretty well. The Tangerine team get it right once again with the two-year-old and he goes straight from unknown to group horse and into the Karaka Million. And ask the uh, question now, finds a nice response as well. Aotea Lad, Killen fights hard on the inside. Aretha is still trying diligently over on the outside. Aotea Lad in front. Aretha's trying to get to it with Killen closer to the fence. He's in front, Aotea Lad, and uh, that's a pretty good debut. Aotea Lad will be Killen and Aretha, and Jim Zendo made ground fourth. So uh, Tiako Bruce taking a familiar two-year-old path uh, with a familiar result here, and he was never really in doubt, and you get the feeling that they really have quite a big rap on this bloke. Well, as you would, running first up in a group two, travelled really sweetly, wasn't strong speed for the distance, the 1,100 metres, there wasn't a great deal of pressure up front, uh, but he travelled sweetly just in behind them, he's come out at the right time as they, as they spread coming over the crossing comes through and we, we saw on the other angle he actually was a little bit new getting to the front so there's improvement to come I'm more interested perhaps in the fourth horse Sinzento who was a conservative 10 links behind Whiskey Neat last time and a lot closer here mm. 
Well, I thought the winner was pretty good, and the trial had indicated he was going to be a proper horse. And they gelded him after the first trial, and he's really come on since then. So I think Aretha's a, a willing to forgive. She's got black type straight away, so nothing wrong with her run, but I think, she, think she's better than that. I just think that they had thrown her into this race maybe as an afterthought because yeah. the black type was there. She, she was one of all the late norms. Spoke to right. Jamie Richards uh, after this race. He was Ellerslie about where this all ends up going. This horse is now top of the ratings for Karaka Million, of course, because Bavellis not eligible. He said they'll have at least two or three in the Karaka Million. So their machine, which is based around getting horses to the Karaka Million, um, is well on track for that again. But Paul Richards, Jamie's dad, was on track at Trentham. Paul, we saw from the trials this horse had a touch of professionalism about it. And he really needed to be today too, didn't he? He did. Um, earlier on in the spring, um, he was very coldy and uh, the decision was made to geld him. And it's been the makings of him. And since then he's, he's turned into a racehorse and um, he's got it all in front of him. Yeah, I hope he wasn't really urgent out of the gates. Did you discuss tactics beforehand? Always the plan to ride him back like he did at the trials and um, just get a drag across the junction and just try and get over them late. Okay, you put the stick away in the closing stages just to make sure he was straight. Were there any concerns at all from your camp? No, no, he's, um, I mean, obviously he's going to improve a lot from today, um, but he's got it all in front of him. Yeah. What's, the, what's the likely route for him for the, for the rest of the season? Uh, he'll probably go to the Eclipse and then into the Cracker Million. Okay. Jesus, is this race is only going to bring him on, isn't it? Oh, for sure, yeah, and you know, the, the trip away from home and, you know, just all learning from him. Yeah. Opie, uh, come here today and this horse has been really professional. How much uh, will benefit will we take out of this heading towards the Cracker Million? Uh, a lot. He um, got there the last 15, he started looking at the big, big screen and the winning post and you know, there's plenty more left in the tank. Yeah, at that point you put the stick away and just sort of made sure he had, had, had the sort of mind on the job. What, what did he show you in the closing stages? Um, he showed a good turn of foot when I really asked him and put the pressure on him. He went, went for me until he got there by himself and um, that's when a bit of greenness kicked in and he's just had a bit of a look around but he's, he's only had two trials, he still doesn't know what he's doing so he's, he's a pretty special little horse. Okay, you've uh, ridden Probabil in recent weeks as well, can you give us a bit of a line on, on how this bloke is compared to her? She, she's, she's classy, um, probably two different type of horses but geez, you can't do much more than win with them. But, I really like both of these horses, and this guy's such a professional, and I don't know, there's good things coming from him. Yeah, look, Aiden, he's just a beautiful colt. Uh, full credit to Stephen and the team. They got him here in fantastic order, and he's run a real creditable race. You know, um, I've trialled the winner up, and I thought he would be a group-winning two-year-old, and uh, he's franked that form. So for Stephen's horse to come out after a below-par trial at Matter Matter and run second today is a great effort. Matthew, what'd you make of that? Yeah, it was a super run. She's a little bit shinny and during the outside gate, I know there's only seven in it, but she's always on the back foot and just always looking at them. So she just did it tough and really hung down the straight and kind of cost herself probably second. But, um, but like I say, she's a filly on the way up. She'll be a nice three-year-old with a bit of time. Uh, very green, very green. Missed the kick and uh, run fairly green up the straight, but gallop, gallop's all right. Nice enough run. Look, she's a big girl, and I think she's going to appreciate time now. She sort of got away with it. Had a bit of dash as a two-year-old earlier on. Well, she's a two-year-old, but um, but she, um, you know, as I said, I think she'll appreciate time. She just was a little bit dour. Beaten jocks in the Wakefield Stakes for hundred thousand dollars for the two-year-olds. Um, I suppose uh, Mickey were talking to Jamie Richards at uh, Auckland yesterday. They'll have a few two-year-olds to compare with with this fellow, won't they? Look, this time last year, after New Year's Day, they sought, uh, thought that Al Hassa was their best two-year-old and, and Opie was going to ride that in the Karaka Million. Then Avantage started to come on and started to gallop really well. So I think they've learned, you know, they know because they're experts at this, don't that to those work. decisions don't need to be made till two weeks out. Yeah. The bottom line is, almost certainly, Opie will be on the best one. He's won the last two Karaka Millions. Mm -hmm. What about the love affair for Tiakau with Savabil? That's the 12th stakes winner by Savabil they've trained in two years. Mm, in crikey. two years, they've trained 12 stakes winners by the same stallion. It seems to be a surprise among people, Bruce, that Savabil's throwing two-year-olds, but when you look mm. at his pedigree, there's a fair bit of speed there. He's not exactly Zabil on pedigree, exactly even that. though he's his sire, obviously. Yeah, Success Express coming through on the damn line, and he is throwing some precocious horses. Just also, he's getting an awful lot of good mares, yeah. because he's our top dog. Mm, yeah. So he's getting a lot of good mares coming through, and a lot of horses go to the sales. You look at them, and they're bold, and they're big, and they're beautiful. Mm. And, but also, these horses going to Tiakea, they are trained to do this job, mm. and they're doing it very, very well. So, so in terms of the overview of the two-year-olds, you touched on it a wee bit there. Uh, yep. Shinzento running fourth, a good run. 
A good guide into whisky neat last week, though, because it was yeah, fairly absolutely. and beaten by yeah. 10 lengths. Conservative 10 lengths there, so Even where do they sit? Well, we, He'd I have his hands full, wouldn't he? Yeah, whisky neat, Bazell, are they the two at the moment? Bavella. Bavella yeah. he, even Killam was good. I mean, yeah. he, he, yep. He's yeah, obviously he, a standing prospect with Waikato Stud. I said last there. week, I, I think this is a very good bunch of two-year-olds mm. so far, because at least we've seen six or seven real horses, whereas this time last year you might have seen a couple. I'm um, talking about real horses. What about the horse in the first yesterday? The dividend wasn't a lot to get excited about, but Lincoln Falls is, is a proper horse, and he comes and he wins this, He's and without being rude, horse. he was always going to win this. He's the horse with the big blaze and the, I hate to say it, Sent it there. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Even he, that's why he drifted. He, he could even he start. To do it he could have carried Santa. It wouldn't have mattered. Now um, I spoke to Lisa Ladder, so here he is winning this. And uh, he comes to Ellerslie next start because they need to get him used to Ellerslie if he's going to be a Derby contender. Now he's a ready to run horse, but that means he's not Caracamillion eligible. Okay. So no Caracamillion for him. So Lisa's plan is to go Boxing Day at Ellerslie, a race named the Uncle Remus, where he could meet Dawn Patrol which would be a good race. Then head to the Levin Stakes, which is on the 12th at Trenton. That would be against Madison County more than likely. So he's up against the horses around first and second in the 2000 guineas, yep. coming up next. And then he'll be set for the Derby. So they see him as a Derby horse, no Caracamillion Classic. But Bruce, this is, this is the proper horse. Overall time slow, very good closing. So they just crawled along, didn't they? You can see them there, mm. the, the leader just setting them up. Kahu Rock, just a maiden, uh, five-star maiden coming into the race, but they've come home quickly, one of the fastest 600s, or at least around the bend anyway. It was the quickest, 34.77. So he's quickened up nicely. Qu big question mark over the opposition here, but he couldn't have done much more. He it? has the pedigree for 2,400 metres, I suppose, but he doesn't strike me as a mile and a half horse just on the way he goes. Because he's so brilliant looking. Yeah, but I suppose he, he's the market like for the Living Classic. So this is on the first day of the 12th, or as some people would know at Kamara Nuggets Day. Uh, $8 for Madison County. They are looking to head that way. Lincoln Falls at $10. Crown Prosecutor, of course, very good at Otaki last week at $12. And Spiritual Bia, um, I spoke to Nigel, we'll talk to him later on, but I don't get the feeling this is on their hit list. I think they're more likely the Guineas at Ellerslie on the 1st of January. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But yeah, Lincoln Falls is likely to head there after going to the Uncle Remus, but he needs to get to Ellerslie. Lisa's going to bring a bit of a team up. Princess Emily and Authentic Paddy will come back to defend his Zabiel title. Mm -hmm. But Lincoln Falls needs a spin around Ellerslie because it's a tricky place to go and they want to set him for the derby. Mm. OK, so that was Trentham. We've got Ellerslie and also um, New Zealand's biggest stakes race winner in Australia coming up after the break.